I'm so sorry about the dogs, guys. They are just wild beasts. My sister just had babies. She can't take her dogs to the park. And my brother-in-law just did a 50-mile mountain run yesterday. So he is dead and cannot exercise them. So they are living here. And take a look at these little dudes here. This one over here is familiar. This is Loblin. They're good babies. Hello, people of YouTube. You like Undead Unluck. And that's probably why you clicked on this video. Holy sh**. Why doesn't this have more presence on YouTube? Why am I not seeing YouTube shorts every week talking about Undead Unluck and how rad it is? What the f- No, for real. <laughs> Why isn't everyone talking about this? Let's be honest. At first I was like, it's fine. I feel resentful that I don't have a whole bunch of One Piece to read and I'm pretty pissy about it. <laughs> and we got to chapter 31 and I was like, it's good after chapter 32 from that moment on. And it got bigger and bigger. Like you get to chapter 40 and you were like, mm. and, and last week, if you watch that episode, you're going to see me talk about how I have nervousness with a series that starts really, really big in its scope. Because I think big scope, if it's not given gravitas, feels really sh and cheap. It means you've started at a ceiling and there's no working within it because you have to work with such a big scope that it's hard to maneuver with. Big things are harder to make feel personal, to make a story out of, and you can't deliver on big stuff either. So usually starting big is a sign of weak writing. Most of the time it can't be delivered upon. I think Undead Unluck is doing it. All these ideas that were coming in, I was like, uh, how long until that gets old? Like as a backdrop piece. And the way that they make mm. the reveal, you're like, like it's not old. Now it's part of the story. Every time they find something out, you wonder what consequences or rewards they had. It, it's brilliant. This to me feels like an hour long part. If I watch someone doing a read through of One Piece, there's no world where I click on their early East Blue video, but I might click on their hour long park video, right? This feels like that to me. I get what the series is doing now. And it's really, really exciting. And there was one thing that I think a lot of people would find very disturbing in the first chapters that you oh, would totally. have been like kind of disappointed. And you know what? We don't have to hedge. We can just fuck on a spoil verse. In the beginning, the main character, Andy, literally just grabs Fuko and is like, oh, excuse me if I just kiss you and ravage you and try to have sex with you and use your unluckiness. And you're like, oh, Jesus, no. <laughs> I want to stand by. I think as much as it's terrible, it's not a bad choice narratively because like, Part of what's interesting is that having to make her like him forces him to consider her and forces him to snap out of his I'm a silly Deadpool mode that he's come to from all of his endless life. It's way more than that because then we get into this one and we do the most amazing training moment. Also in there, our main character Foucault actually lives through some of his life, goes back in time to some of his earlier times when he still wore clothes and wasn't wiggling his junk around. We see him and he's never smiling and she has this feeling about I just need to I just need to make him smile and she lives many many lifetimes with him and goes through all these changes but they never kiss and then she tells him before she disappears when we meet again we're going to meet on this date August whatever 2020 and you're going to see me and so when he sees her now that you understand that she's lived through his mind and his lives you can kind of feel this reaction that he'd have all these years that he waited for her to come back and even though she doesn't have quite the same feelings in the moment when she first jumped off now I, I thought the way it was explained was that this wouldn't change the past retroactively like this didn't happen to him in the past. no but it felt like it changed his soul yeah and her soul connected to his soul mm -hmm. and he had that feeling yeah he was unhinged and inhuman at the beginning of the series in a major way because he had lost his connection and okay should we just get into like the beat by beat narrative now the beginning of this is where i was feeling the least certain of this section where it was under breaking in and this is another one of those things where things that are too big and if you hey if you're a writer out there or even like a dm going so big that your ultra secret institution organization is suddenly being broken into by a lava monster who's under control and someone it turns out has copy powers and he's betraying everyone and we're barely into the series and that's happening and he's busting through i genuinely think should be too big to work this should yep. be bad writing and i wasn't feeling confident they were going to pull it off at this point how do you go from that to like everything else is yeah. going to have to tumble and you're going to have to come into this like softer quieter space and rebuild it but instead that just made peak sense here this series does not obey the logic I'm discussing. By the way, for anyone who doesn't watch the first one, we're just going to call them The Onion because it's on everything. Sorry, they're not The Union, they're The Onion. The Onion versus Under feels like this is too early in the series to do what we're doing, but it starts to move in a really compelling way. 
I love the fight against Burn. I thought this whole section was very cool. I love using the unluck with Andy's head. I also love that they're like, well, of course it didn't hit his core. The unluck was focused on Andy. It was attacking him. It wasn't going for Burn. Also, when we got to this point, I was like desperately trying to like it enough, which felt really forced. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. We weren't lying when we said we liked it last time. Yeah. But we were trying to like it enough to justify doing a series. And we're going big without context, so nothing really makes sense and it doesn't feel like I'm involved in the big moments. And now I can see that these big moments become more and more relevant. But not only that, you have a theory about what's going to happen in this part and why we need to begin at the end the way that we are right now, because things need to be big because there's this feeling of an ending. And why don't you tell me? It feels like we're showing up at the end of a series because we're at the end of this loop, which we find out in this section. To find out that the story is based on multiple loops with the same thing happening over and over again in like a ground hogness yeah was so clever because then yeah. this author was able to start wherever the shit they wanted because if you then explain well this is groundhog day we're gonna do all this shit again god is just manipulating things and once we get to a certain point it stays gone all of a sudden you're like well you can you can start wherever the hell you want and by all means start at a climatic moment and bring everybody in and make them a little confused so that when you finally have it revealed how that's going on you're like holy sh- okay yeah. This all works. The reveal of loops, how that works. By the way, we can't pronounce names. We're calling her Juice. Yeah. The reveal of the arc from Juice was fantastic. The copy power from Billy, I really liked as an explanation. How he was able to talk about like, and someone say no, please. Sorry, it's Juice. But Jui means judge in Portuguese. Re Juice. Um... <laughs> I really liked Billy getting to talk about everybody's powers in what they mean. Like talking about how undead is tougher than he looks because he thought the power would get rid of pain. And he's like, oh, you just work through it. That's wild. Or talking about how Juice's power is not only powerful, but easy to use. I think it's really interesting to talk about how so many of the characters are like, there's an expectation I feel like in superpower media to talk about superpowers as always being like nuanced and difficult to control. And him comparing powers to be like, this one's easy to use. This one's a little bit harder. Unjustice is, despite her having more experience than anybody else, Unjustice Uh, isn't that hard to use. Anybody could use it to kind of the same effect. Whereas Unstoppable was something he wasn't able to get as much use out of as Top. I like that comparison. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, the fact that he has to break his body to do stuff, like pointing that out, it was really neat and cool, but it really was the reveal of the loops that starts to be like, okay, what are we doing here? The part that got me like so invested wasn't that as much much as it was the reveal that her favorite shoujo manga was a major plot factor and was a prophetic text. And no, like that has to be for everyone. I can't imagine anyone not feeling that way. Cause okay, I know that I do a thing that is a thing I do and I don't care. <laughs> I compare and dead unluck to One Piece, but that's because the author clearly sees One Piece as being something that's very important in their life. And they clearly see him as being their sensei, a sensei they don't live with, don't hang out with, but they're using this piece. So when they use the manga, I was like, A, this is brilliant because you get to talk about someone that you love in a way that's done differently. And B, it pulls out the idea of the manga within the manga of One Piece. And it says this probably has, I feel like this manga has way more information in it and is more important than is being let on. We've already talked about how one of the greatest things at the end of the One Piece could be if it turns out to be a manga, Mm -hmm. the whole piece. We thought that it was absolutely brilliant to take that idea of her manga, which was just a background piece of information, and then pull it up all of a sudden so it's front and center and becomes one of the most pinnacle things of this entire piece but then at the same time finishes it mm-hmm. gets to the end of it it also feels compelling because if the series is gonna have a mystery and it can just bring out wild twist powers out of nowhere it becomes unpredictable which i think is less fun for a mystery except for this shows something about the writing style that i think is very important which is this is a very efficient writer they don't leave scraps on yeah. the plate they are licking it clean this yeah. writer uses every little bit of information they leave behind this random this is my my favorite shoujo from the beginning of the story is important. Every little detail that we linger on for more than a half second is going to matter. And that's how a series like this is able to be predicted at all. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun to work with this series because it's got that same thing going on because all of your answers are going to be drawing from the things that are brought up. 
what are the little details they've left sitting around that let you put things together? You and I talked and there's this principle that we use in theater and other things called Chekhov's gun. Yeah. The idea that you can't bring something onto a stage and then not use it. If you put a gun on stage, you better use the gun or take it the hell off stage. And we talk about it all the time in One Piece because One Piece is over so much time and space. It feels like the moments of his Chekhov gun are so far back because he's a yeah. cheeky monkey. He's juggling so many guns that you can't predict. Yeah, exactly. Like, so we're like, is this a Chekhov's gun? Is this a Chekhov's gun? You can't know what's gun? a Chekhov's gun and what's just a piece of world building because Oda is trying to build an entire world. And he's a genius world builder. But I will say, a lot of what makes One Piece unpredictable is while all of the elements that come to fruition are something he tossed up earlier, he's tossed up so many things. Whereas the unpredictability in this, he's not tossing up as much and he's making use of everything still, which should be more predictable. But the powers are so wild and can do such crazy shit that you still can't predict it fully. With One Piece, though, is because it is so long and he puts mm. so many guns on the table that after a time, forget about some of the guns existing. Yes. Unlike a dramatic piece where you're going to see the gun the whole time. Whereas this mangaka instead is like, I put a gun out. Okay, now I'm going to show you all about this gun and we're going to use it. And it's just, it feels so satisfying as an audience to be like, yes. Thank you. It feels so gratifying to be like, why do you have this thing? This thing doesn't make sense. What did you say last time that you didn't think made sense? And then boom, okay. we flew over? Yes, I didn't fully dive into it. I forgot to come back to it because I was sick. My head was foggy. But I felt frustrated and was really hopeful they would deliver on the fact that it felt fun insane that Juice wasn't taking it seriously and was like, we need to focus on building strength and just let them roll over another failed mission when they were two away from Doomsday. That felt dumb to me. So the fact that that was actually brought up made it stop feeling like a world building mistake and a storytelling mistake and feel like it was meant to be a seed planted. And like the amount of confidence you can have in a series where you think it's a type of series that will just not make sense and not give a shit versus a series that when something doesn't make sense, you're supposed to question it, is immeasurable. It is so difficult to explain the difference of confidence you can have in a series that does and doesn't care when something doesn't make sense. Brother Onion just pointed out the thing that, Brother Onion, just pointed out the other one of those that I was like, oh, when I was thinking like, how are so many goddamn meteors being pulled down to earth every time there's a big old giant piece of unluck? This is so yeah. ridiculous. And then immediately the author is like, that is ridiculous. It's intentional. The earth is blown up so many times that there's mass debris in the sky and the things that are being pulled down are those meteorites from the mass debris. And the fact that there's meteorites before space had anything other than the sun and the moon. Exactly. Exactly. It's really smart. It's everything that feels like it doesn't make sense ends up making sense. And it also makes the series possible to predict. Like the efficient writing and the care of illogic are so important for a series making such big swings to work. And I'm so happy it's actually delivering on this stuff. What chapter was it that we met the kid who was writing? 37. As soon as we got to that person, the vibe changed. Everything changed. Ano? Uh, can we just say Ano is my favorite character. They are thematically one of the most interesting and richest characters I've seen. Like, they are Vegapunk level thematic depth achieved in a sixth the time. And that's what I was about to say. So then the vibe mm. changed and the vibe became different because I was like, how have you made me care? By chapter 40, I was in chapter 40 and I realized, how do I care so deeply about these characters now? Otto made me care about Rip. I didn't give a shit yep. about Rip. Rip was no, the last time showed Rip up on a cruise in hell. And whenever the little kid kept talking about Rip, I was like, shut the fuck up about Rip. Who cares about Rip? And then eventually I was like, God damn it, poor Rip. But I kept thinking to myself, like, I have never cared about characters this deeply in 40 chapters. It's remarkable. Like, this is the Arlong Park. This is the moment where it kicks off and you see what this series is capable of. There are no throwaway characters, absolutely. It cares about every detail it brings up. Now, we need to acknowledge there's some personal bias for why we love Ano so much and we're so eager to love them. Should we go into that? Yeah. Do y'all know where we live? Do y'all know the zone we live in? This series, last time I talked about how it was made for me because Fuko looked like a character I would draw her, I would write her. Same with Ano, that is a design I would write and draw. I also went into how much I love Lake Baikal. It's one of my favorite places to read about. You said earlier that you've 
watch a bunch of YouTube deep dives on it, right? Constantly. I love that freaking lake. It's Constantly. so weird. I'm going there someday. And then we live on Vancouver Island, a short ferry ride away from Stanley Park, one of my favorite places in the world, one of those beautiful places in the world. When they were like, come meet me at the bench, first of all, I was like, which bench? There's so many benches like... in Stanley Park, y'all. But there's a famous <laughs> bench. And that's exactly what I said next. I was like, okay, okay, you're being an asshole. They mean the bench. You mean the bench because they show the view from the bench and you're like, yeah, that is the bench at Stanley Park. You don't generally know that is the bench unless you spend some time in Vancouver. God damn, I can't express how much glee I felt. No one references BC. No one outside Mass Effect cares about Vancouver. Poutine making an appearance is wild, I will say. We know poutine is much in the west of Canada. It's more of an Ontario Quebec thing. Okay, so when they went there, I also loved it because I felt like the world was so inclusive, but the world usually isn't inclusive in this way, so it felt like we were so special. It's always in Toronto. So of course we were biased to love Anno Un. The other reason that I liked them immediately is they had this lightness and this this soul to them that was like beautiful and light and glorious and a single parent but they had an amazing life and they weren't trying to be like oh this mom is a terrible parent and you're like no they're just a single parent doing a really good job with a beautiful relationship with their kid and then when the kid goes through all of this they manage to keep some of the beauty and lightness in their life despite watching their mom die despite having their mom not know that they're still there and they just can't see them. So they have this incredible background with the parent that is so tragic and yet it doesn't destroy them as a human. So many authors will just be like, and now this character's becoming, like, think about how dude is becoming such an asshat because of the thing with his sister, whereas this character is just like maintaining their humanity through tragedy. When Anno was just willing to have their arm ripped off, I went, that that's stupid. Why are you okay with this if you can't get it back? And then I went, you know what? No, I'm not supposed yep. to critique it. I'm supposed to be asking this question because this yep. series delivers on its questions. With Otto's personality is that because he was such a good person whose lessons from childhood and from love from childhood stayed with him, when he talked about his selflessness and went through this and he didn't talk about it, but he just lived a selfless act. I was like, that makes sense. This is a person who they left so much humanity mm -hmm. in that he was able to say to Juice, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Now is not the time to play it close to your chest. If you got these players in, now is the time to go for the throat. And even that, before you got revealed the backstory, just saying that to Juice felt like such a endorsement of what we were reading, that this was a story. The story we're reading is something this person loved so much that they made it their way of communicating with the world. And that they loved these heroes so much that they needed to intercede. They loved the heroes they were reading about and were just like, yeah, you should trust them. They're incredible. This series has a unique ability to make tragic backstories by the fact this power system is inherently structured to give beautiful symbolism, which I suddenly see why when I talked about the power system I wanted to do for a comic book, people said I should read this. Not because the power system is similar to my idea, but it's because it has the same result of it is built for thematic exploration. Because each person's power is about a fundamental symbol of reality, a fundamental force that they ignore, their powers are made to explore what the thing they ignore means. What does repair mean? It means confidence. It means safety. It means that you can act without the fear of death. Knowing that your body can fix itself is important. It's the only way you're able to act with, with any trust that you can survive. Unrepair is terrifying because we don't consider the necessity of repair. Undead is terrifying because we don't consider the pain of living without death. Unluck is terrifying because we don't consider the trust we can have that the world isn't conspiring to kill us. And unknown is the most terrifying of all because we don't think about how important it is to be known which ties so beautifully into one of the coolest training arcs I have ever seen in fiction where we go into the thematic exploration of the importance of being known and how to be known is to be alive. Okay, do you want to take it from here? When we were talking about the 
being known too. It wasn't like they understood more than anyone else in the entire world what not being known meant. They had to live with their mother not knowing who they are, with walking through society as an invisibility, with the understanding of the deep loneliness that happens when you are unknown. They actually understood it's such a cellular level, the tragedy and terror of not being known that they are one of the only ones who could understand how being known deeply would then be a way of leveling up your power or your person in order to create strength and actually beat God. Because when they sent her inside of his life, the books of his life, and she and she chopped off her arm and had this thing and was able to turn him into this and smashes him with it and creates the existence of his life and sends her spirit into it, which is the thing that Foucault believes in because the idea that it is your spirit that lives on, not your mind that lives on, then you could see how he was saying to her, the most important thing in life is to be known. Go know him. Go allow him to know you. Wander through the pages of his life and his books and read it through living it and be part of this. And then they took their experience and tragedy and turned it into a winning weapon of love and said, this is the way to become strength. I want to go into that further because the power system is so built for symbolic exploration. People were talking about a man only dies when he's forgotten being compared to one piece. And I want to say, of course you are. That's unavoidable. It is so obviously a comparison you can make. But what I think is crazy is I think this series explores that idea better than One Piece because its power system is built to explore ideas. We see Foucault tell Andy, undead, the man who lives without death, who exists to explore the notion of what death is, that death is being forgotten, that it is being not known, that it is not being carried on in the minds and hearts of the people around you. And when we reach the confrontation with Victor, I think to myself, well, of course, if you're a writer, Foucault needs to be the difference between Andy and Victor because Victor is stronger. So the only thing he has an advantage is going to be Foucault. It's obvious it's necessary storytelling because that's the corner you painted yourself into. But I thought that would be a physical help. I thought that would be Foucault getting the lucky shot. And, and to an extent, obviously it was. The unluck powers were needed to be Victor. But the far more important factor wasn't the actual power. The far more important factor was that Foucault had made Andy reconsider what his powers mean by making him reconsider what dead means. And he was thus able to think about how he moves his soul. And making him reconsider what life means. Mm -hmm. Because he felt like eventually being able to be alive and alive and alive and alive again was quote unquote the best thing ever like what other people would see. And he was only looking at from the tragic part of it that being alive forever meant that you were going to lose so many people. And then she pointed out none of them are ever lost. Because you get to live on forever. So all you're doing is you're accumulating experiences and love and you're the one that helps them live forever. What an incredible training arc. What incredible idea. People in the comments are playing too close to the sun, Icarus. Oh, it was the guy who died two chapters early on, the mech suit. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. Goodbye, unavoidable. You're unavoidable. There it is. Hey there, YouTube. This is Unhinged Mama. I know that you are unaware and it's unbelievable that you haven't been watching Undead Unluck. It's undeniably unequal to so many things. It is unfair that you're not giving it a chance and unquestionably good. So like, subscribe, press like, not again, because then Drock freaks out at me because I've told you to unlike it and join us along for the ride. You will be unequivocally joyful. Ciao. That was good. I remember now, unavoidable, not impressive. Here's how you know he's unimpressive. So many people were mad at them for killing Gina. How many people were mad at them for killing unavoidable? How many people at the Union were like, hey, you killed my best friend unavoidable? He can't avoid this shade. <laughs> <laughs> Unavoidable, ironically, was very avoidable because we voided him for our collective short-term memories. <laughs> Someone said earlier that the first seven chapters feel like they are from a much worse manga, and I agree. Sorry, Unavoidable, you're from a different manga that's not as good as the one we're reading now, where Ano exists, and I love them. And when they said that if you get past this chapter, you're going to be in a different manga, I would say that it's not chapter 32. I would say it's chapter 34. I got to chapter 34. I was like, oh, th we're not even in the same realm now. The power system is so interesting. When it comes to a power system that I like to think about for fighting, for combat, for what's cool, what does
does cool shit. I vastly prefer Devil Fruits and Nen from Hunter Hunter. I think Nen from Hunter Hunter is perfect. It's brilliant. There's a reason that Naruto's chakra was just Nen but worse. Nen 2.0. That being said, I don't think I've ever encountered a power system that felt so ground up, built to explore themes. In order to be on something, it is the negation of what that thing is. So unhappy, you would first have to think of all the things that are happy and then take all those things away. And I think people just see it as being this like single layered thing like, oh, they're unrealistic. Well, you only think of it in one concept, but realism means so much. So you could take away somebody's sanity by making everything feel like it doesn't really belong there. And this mangaka plays with those ideas. Like the way that we always talk about this character use their design or their hockey or their... Mm -hmm devil fruit to its maximum ability almost every other than unavoidable almost every single character <laughs> in this uses their unskills to the nth degree and are constantly seeing like what does the opposite of that thing mean it's so interesting the fight with autumn didn't matter to me at all in terms of what moves they'd use or them having to work together bringing back the artifact that aged Rip back to his former self even like I think there are manga that the fights are super hype for but I cared about it in such a different and deeper way because like I don't give a shit about Rip as a character at this point but Ano explaining who Rip is from having loved this story they've read from knowing the world and knowing what would happen and thinking that Rip is amazing made me so happy that they were able to help Rip just as much as they were able to help Fuko and Andy it was beautiful I cared about Rip even more when they said I know how much you love a beautiful character mama yeah and then they used the machine and said so I'll give him back to you or something and then she aged Rip back to where he should have been mm -hmm. not only that he loved the characters who weren't just undead and unluck he loved them all and clearly had this special place in their heart for Rip and then we find out that they say yeah Rip is a guy who thinks that he's a bad guy but he's really a good guy and he doesn't understand himself mm -hmm. and when Ono says that thing about his mom it made me realize like how much of this is what I said to you when I said mm -hmm. like how much of their mom lived with them and how so many people become jaded or or uncaring and Anna saw what happened to Rip and how he let his love twist him into thinking that he's a bad person and Anna actually said to themselves like it seemed like a choice I'm not gonna let my grief and my loss and my trauma turn me into a bad person because I know that Rip isn't but they have to go through so many layers to find that out I'm just gonna know that now I'm gonna let my mom's love keep me alive in a beautiful way and I love Andy pulling everyone together by being like think about everything that Anno did, they killed Unseen or whatever his name was, saved Fuko and re-aged Rip. Anno knew what was happening and did that because we were the ones who were needed to beat Autumn. We have to work together. And by putting it that way, instantly had everyone working together despite yeah. Rip hating it. It's so great. And now, like, Akira, the real Ano, has a power as we go through their backstory that forces us to confront the flaws in both Foucault's logic yeah. and Andy's. Both of their perceptions of death. Yeah. To the flaw of Andy's logic, they were still thinking and conscious and building memories despite being unable to be known, unable to be remembered by more than a single person who just wishes for their happiness because they weren't able to accomplish the things that they could really be remembered for at this point. For contradicting Foucault, this was a person who was clearly alive and clearly capable of hoping and wanting, but who couldn't be known, couldn't be carried on, couldn't be remembered. This is a power built to push both of their philosophies to their absolute limits. The man only dies when he's forgotten is taken to all sorts of extents. You mm -hmm. also have, what's the name of Undead's counterpart? Uh, Victor. Victor, thank you. I forgot. I forget constantly. So you also, I don't know why, but it just, yeah. Victor seems like such a not name for him. Anyway, when we see that really Victor and Undead Andy are both the same person coming from the same place, then you're like, but they both exist. And because Victor has never been forgotten and because Juice is there and has this deep connection to Victor, Victor, Victor is almost just as important as I at one time I was like Victor is just this other thing we'll see and now I've realized they're like no 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 Victor is just part of the story you will see Victor time and time again I thought he was a dangerous power-up mode and that was it I did too and instead he's his own character still somehow and I was like the fact that Victor gets to exist inside of him and that there are two people and nobody can forget that Victor is there even though we don't see Victor in everyday interactions we know that Victor feels like he could take over Andy with enough work and he could become that person and he decides
sense to say, okay, let's give you one more chance. I think that this could actually work now that I see that you were able to make changes and things. And I was like, the whole idea of a man only dies when he's forgotten is we still have Victor as a main protagonist, despite the fact that he's theoretically not even here. But his life keeps coming up again and again because he's thought about nonstop. The author clearly knows about Victor, knows what they represent, what he cares about. It's brilliant. It's it's really well handled. And the way they kill him, just before I forget, the way they kill him from existing in the real world is to smash a thing in Andy's brain that makes it so he is kind of, quote unquote, forgotten, cut off. Yeah. Also, the fact that he kind of gives up, even though we could keep fighting, because he sees that unluck is evolving. And exactly. That it's able to work off of knowledge and care. Now, I want to get into a theory I have. We're going to do a lot of corkboarding. And I think I have the more corkboardy thoughts than you for once, which is crazy. I think you do. Can I quickly say how wild it is that both of us picked the same moment for the art? He's like, I think I know which one you're going to pick. And I'm like, well, I kind of doubt it. It's Big Book. Big Book is the moment for sure. So to briefly corkboard, I think God needs to be trying his absolute best because so many powers in this world are based off of affection and Foucault's powers are the one that they think can reach God. And we now know from Victor that Foucault needs to know God well for luck to specifically affect them. I think God might be a symbol of the author, first of all, because we're going into so much meta narrative, we're going into so much postmodernist thought in this series already, that I think God needs to be a meta narrative author who's writing the story. That feels necessary for me. I feel like Foucault's ability to reach out and remove God from the story, whether it's killing them or not, needs to come from thinking God is doing his best, thinking the author is doing his best to create a good work. And I think Foucault needs to love whatever God is. There needs to be a deep knowledge, understanding, and love for God. We got hit with a delete your art, which is real sad for where we're at. I'm not deleting the sketch because that's too far in. Let's see what we can do here. Can I add to that? Because mm. the beauty of us both being in a place where we corkboard and one of us corkboards ahead is we both get to think now, unlike when it used to be me all alone because you already knew the answers. When I think about how she has to love of God, I also worried that for a minute that God was going to be one of the people already down with us. Thought about that too. What if God was one of us type of just a stranger on the bus? Because I started to think about what if the reason why Foucault can reach God is because God can love Foucault. Can I explain why I think, holy, holy, if I'm right about this, this is going to be brilliant, okay? What is necessary for a story to be interesting? Plot, character, conflict, thing, and conflict. setting. Conflict. Hear me out on something. The Uma said all they know is what they were told by God is to cause suffering to humans, make humanity suffer. Yeah. They are conflict forced into the world, coming with a concept. They are a concept and conflict itself. Everybody, this might be incredible. Hear me out on this, okay? Brain blast. You do not know how to predict. This is not how you no, no, predict. No. So many brain blasts are happening at once. Andy's goal was to die. Andy's goal was to die. Why does a series need conflict to be interesting? Why does a series need to be interesting? To be published. If God is the author, he needs to make them suffer for the story to exist. This is a story about the characters fighting back against their creator. This is postmodern, and I think that's where it's going. And I think the series ends with Andy dying because if God is defeated and Unluck is able to make the series end, the world does die. Mm. The world dies and stops existing if it can't be published anymore. And if it doesn't have this forced conflict of the Uma being introduced and destroying it and killing these characters, it stops being published because there's no more conflict. There's nothing interesting to it. Which, or it could, you're right, 100%. Mm -hmm. then you're, in that case, you're buying into the idea of it being an actual mangaka. I think the mangaka is God, yes. The upper level mangaka would be a God. Because I said, this is going to be some Matrix ash. Like, it feels like we were in the Matrix last time when I said that. And I felt like maybe I'm talking off the hinge here. But then I said to you, I'm still worried that it's Matrixy. And if you're right on this, that's beyond Matrixy. It's not just Matrixy, because Matrixy is this isn't the real world. That's different. Like, postmodernism, character versus author. Let me tell you, you know how I said this person has writing sensibilities similar to me? I have a script half written, Escape from the B movie, about characters who are trying to get back to their original films that they were pulled from, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
So this is absolutely the type of shit I would do, which yes, I am using as reasoning and hear me out on why. Someone earlier said that the relationship with Akira and his mother is based off of this guy's relationship with his mother. And we are actively doing a show about you and me reading manga together. Coincidence? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, when I was looking at it, I thought, ironically, the thing that added up the most to me was video game. Because when we looked over at the wall and it had all of the things that were already gone from missing different things that they were supposed to take care of and there was only one left, that felt like you fail a freaking level in a video game and True. now you have to restart it. I stand by it. The series is about an author trying to keep his characters he loves alive by making them suffer. I hope I'm right. I think it would be super super cool i think that it could be video gamey it's literally saying on the thing if we don't reach this one then we don't fix this level then we have to go back to the beginning doesn't it feel like a video game in so many it ways does. in it the does. way that these characters are trying to fight their way out in the way that there is a certain number of failures you have before quote unquote reset back into the exact same loop how different characters can die so every story can be slightly different but it's the same thing and now they're breaking that loop I agree it's video gaming. I'm standing by my theory that it's a manga. I don't hate this because I, but I also think that you could have a character versus author in a video game. You could, you could. I don't think these ideas would be mutual exclusive. I'm not going to lie. When I'm making predictions, what I like to do is not say that I'm the greatest predictor ever. Uh, you know what I did instead was say, if I'm right, I'm the greatest. <laughs> You're still... I could be wrong. I'm willing to go for that. Regardless, you're still not the greatest predictor ever. You just, you predicted something. That's how it worked. Well, tell me that wasn't cooking. I predicted that Luffy was a sun god. And yeah, yeah, you win. Unless I'm right, and then I win. I didn't run around going, I am the greatest predictor ever. <laughs> Look, we all got our own style. Anyways... <laughs> If I'm right, I genuinely think that's equivalent to Luffy the Sun God. It's pretty peak. It's pretty peak. If I'm wrong, then, then I'm wrong. Who cares? Yeah, it's pretty peak. We'll see. I just really feel a video game. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm just like small things within it that I'm really liking. I love the how when we see Undead again, Andy is able to turn his blood into swords and do all this crazy shit. Mm -hmm. But the idea that he infuses his body parts with his soul in order for the effect that she has on his soul to transfer its unluck into others, like, yeah. what? The oh. unluck is just following, like, a finger and targeting him instead of needing to be on his head all the time. And the fact that, unlike Victor, he gains an ability that even Victor didn't have to regrow his body from his lower half instead. Yeah. Because Uko made him reconsider what dead means and was like, yeah, yes. dead is... When you remembered, all of my body can be me. That's so good. The fact that yes. her, that her impact on his psyche and philosophy affected his power. Ah That's what I'm saying. So the doing the whole like I used to consider that I had to do my head first, da 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 da. But after hanging out with Fuku, I realized that I I had this misconception. And then the idea that if I'm not dead and my soul is infused, my soul itself is able to direct my body. So his body isn't just this thing that is useless without the head, because his soul is helping to guide what needs to be done. So he could still punch, he could still kick, he could still activate weaponry, because the soul is the thing that is determining what the actions of the body you're going to be doing not the brain he no longer feels like the brain is the center of life also the idea that victor had told him like yeah you may be able to make a blade etc but it doesn't have the, it's not sharp enough it's not this yet and he's like yeah no i can get there thing it was basically like you know thanks for showing me some of the areas in which i have weaknesses and need to improve but the idea that he could package his soul, that his soul could come in chunks because he puts some in his pinky, some in his thumb, some in this. Yep. It's so he sends his soul into different aspects of his body to take them off. I was like, that is brilliant. So now we get to see the soul is not being a whole package. And that's another thing that felt video gamey to me mm -hmm. because when you think about video games and you look at like a health bar and I think of it as a soul bar almost in this one, it feels like you can break it into chunks and you can take some of your health bar or some of your soul bar down and put it into a finger. And now that finger has partial soul and shoots off. I love that we're in a place in the series that I can have trust that will be delivered on. Yeah, I do trust the author now. And that's nice. It lets us enjoy 
enjoy things more. They've shown us, yeah, yeah, put your faith in me. This is going to go well. I said just before we started that I could see us meeting or at least interviewing online this author at some point. Like, it feels so tailor-made for us. I don't disagree. We also did see them actually pull Foucault's soul out of Foucault's body. Did you see the person who said they think Foucault is God? I saw that. I will consider this. I don't know why we had to chop off so many arms, because we chopped off both of the, the manga kids' arms, and then we chopped off Juice's arm, and I was like, that's a lot of arm chopping in a very short period of time. Feels like everyone is trying to be shanks up in the house. I'm really disappointed in Billy. Yeah. I hope I'm going to like Billy eventually, but I'm feeling really disappointed in the piece of crap. I'm glad that he's got himself some beautiful rot going on in him because, uh, yeah, you earned that. Enjoy that rot. And I'm a little bit disappointed in Juice, too. Like, I know we're supposed to be like, you know, it's great that she has this kind of faith in him. And often we find out that who cares if Billy is blind? I know he's blind. He's Billy is not just blind. He's hey, guys, guess what? Disappointing. If you think having a disability or being part of a minority group makes you a good person, get, get out of here with that attitude. Equality means everyone has the potential to be an absolute bastard, regardless of their intersectionality. That's equality, baby. The, the beautiful thing about being human is we all have an equal right to suck. You know what is very disappointing is going back and being like, oh, did I let this other person? and live and still have faith and hope in him even though they're ruining everything and might destroy the universe yep and then the person is like why why i don't understand and she's like you're just cuz off vibes no you know what i liked too some of the things need to be talked about that i think is a not manga manga but manga you know how i talked about one of my things i liked about one piece is when i said to you i was really worried about reading a thing that was going to just be all like battle 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 no celebration yeah this hasn't had like a breath moment which is whatever but it kind of did too because mm. the creating of a manga was a breathing moment where we got to see other things that weren't just fighting and a little bit of background and like other personalities traits come out in our people even, so even the training arc the 10 years that Fuku got to spend going through the timeline yeah so unlike in some manga and by that I mean One Piece because that's the only manga I've read although I'm a good ways into the strawberry one, and I'm going to be starting the witch hat October 1st, I've decided. I've read five chapters, but I'm start. no, I think I read ten chapters, but I'm stopping. I'm going to go back to the beginning again, and I'm going to do a thing with Discord Squishies that if they want to read along with me for Witch Hat Atelier, that we were going to start October the 1st, because it's called Witch Hat Atelier. In those ones, when you have breaks in wild strawberries and, and or especially One Piece, it feels outside of the context of moving the plot forward mm -hmm. whereas the breaths in this one are still moving the plot forward there doesn't seem to be any wasted space or time and don't get me wrong i think the parties are fun yeah but there is no wasted this space. is very very efficient storytelling like we said earlier everything constantly feels used Yes. And it does it in a beautiful way that, you know, we've got the training arc. It's moving things forward, but there's quiet moments. And the making of the manga was, it was just fun. It was Getting great. to see the whole like robot army thing on them. And that was really fun. Until now, my favorite training arc in any manga was the second half of Whole Cake Island where Luffy could have just left and chose to fight Katakuri so that he could learn Future Sight to get stronger for his crew. This is exactly what you're talking about, moving the plot forward. And it felt like a unique way to do a training arc where the plot didn't need to be stalled. It wasn't a character waiting. This beat it! I liked this as a training arc better than Katakuri's fight. Oh, wow. I love it. the idea of it being... A training arc that comes through exploring your inner self and like connecting two people, improving each other and connecting with each other. That's so unique and cool. That's amazing. The other thing that is really cool about it is that they take the idea of this manga being the longest running. And then he says, and yet I'm going to make it be quote unquote, kind of also a love story. He said longest running shoujo manga, which is explicitly manga for young girls, which are romance folks usually. I liked that because in the beginning, when you see it, it. So much time and space is given to manga for young boys. I loved that it was a chosen love story, manga for young girls. And I didn't know that shoujo is young girls. Mm -hmm. And I just, I applauded the author for making it have relevance and importance because love is actually a whole background basis in One Piece too. We just don't say it. We act like boys don't value love. And it's not usually romantic love that One Piece is about, but like it is still about love. But it's still love. So I like that in this manga, he's like, 
like, no, no, no. Love is going to become very important. And how do we know that? Several of the powers are based off of love. Exactly. And he shows us right away that the person who's going to be able to reach God has to have deep feelings for someone in order to impact him. So he's like, love is the most important thing. Why does the person who write the manga have such power? Because the love of their mom has kept them able to have a beautiful life, even while unknown to anyone. Everything is about love. The love between undead and unluck. The love between Victor, whose name I will never remember because Victor, and Juice. It's all these love pieces that link the story together. And I think that that may be one of the most interesting things. Oh, man. This is a really beautiful series, y'all. This is... Oh, it's red. I thought it was orange. Orange toques look better than red toques. No, it has to be red, but I do love an orange toque. If you ever get a chance, guys, and you really want to have a cool hat that you can wear in public and make people go like, what the hell is that? You can always order yourself up a hat online from a really important town in Canada called Dildo. Christ, I knew where you, yeah. Well, I bought you a dildo hat, so of you course did. you knew where I was going. That's the wrong red. That's pink. I like a pinkish red. But that's not pinkish red. You're colorblind, man. That's just pinkish pink. In fact, it's fuchsia. My computer shows reds a little bit different. All I'm seeing is pink. Also, you order them from the Dildo Brewing Company. It is a lovely beer place. It has one of my favorite beers ever made. And they come in such great colors, such as Hunter's Orange and like bright green. So order a dildo hat. You'll be amazed to how many people you'll meet. But it's so good! It's, it's so good, so, Red! I just, I am blown away. It both hit its stride and delivered on my concerns well enough for me to have faith in it, which I think is the more important part. I think this is a series that once you can have faith in, its storytelling is so much fun because like so many little things this section, if I didn't have confidence that they'd be delivered on, would have made me too concerned to be enjoying it the way that I did. And maybe it was easier because they were in Stanley Park and that made me happy. No, for me, it was so many factors that we've talked about. And I can't believe where we stopped. We're taking unluck by any means necessary? Ah, no! Where would we rank Akira's backstory compared to Straw Hats is such a difficult question. I think it's so similar in sadness to Brooks in a lot of ways because they're both about solitude. I know you're not a huge manga person at this point. I've rarely had other manga have backstories that affect me as much as One Piece. Like, I find a lot of them are overrated and people are like, it's the saddest backstory. I'm like, tell me you haven't read One Piece without telling me you haven't read One Piece. Uh, but genuinely, Akira's backstory made me tear up and I don't tear up from reading that often. Usually it only gets me when I'm watching anime and I have the music and voice acting, but it got me. A lot of people don't understand how much love and the contact of another human being are important. And when you you've got somebody who can write what it feels like to just be a ghost in your own world in this way. It was heartbreaking because it makes you tap into the times that you felt completely alone and you realize how much relationships are the key to joy. That fist bump spread and he just keeps his hand out there and doesn't put it down because he's like, no, you exist. You're here. You're part of us forever. I'm keeping my hand out here. Oh, God, it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. And I keep reminding myself this every time I read something because the first little while when you get into anything, they have to do the backstory. You got to stick with them. You need to let people have their moment to set the stage so that anything else that you learn fits. It's just so hard to be an impatient little puppy while you're reading something. And then we flipped into chapter 40 and I was in, in. I feel like I am being sewn into this story as i read it i feel like i'm the piece of string and the author is taking a needle and just sewing me in it's not just the normal you need to wait i think it is one of those things where when you act too big it is hard to have that confidence and like they've earned it at this point but it's difficult and the reason i want to bring that up is both of us had some distaste about zoro meeting mihawk before it was resolved yes and it's only because oda stuck the landing that it worked like it's a type of thing that is difficult to make good. And I think that's why it's perfectly fair that both of us had trouble committing to feeling confident about this story. Because, like, it's so much bigger than Zoro meeting Mihawk early in One Piece. Exactly. It's making huge, gigantic swings so early into its story. 
not worried on where the mm. author is going to go. I'm a little worried yeah. about the levels of sadness it might go. But now at the place that we're at, the author has done so much work and we're only on chapter 56 that I feel like I've been reading this for months. Like this story has been part of my life for like a long time. How many chapters are there in it so far? You were saying like 200? Yeah, there are like 200. My thought, guys, this is an efficient writer. It doesn't feel like the type of author who would bring something up like the arc and not use it, bring a factor like we only get one more and not use that one more. It feels like the type of author who's not going to bring up these ideas and not act with them. They have to be relevant some way. And you can make something relevant without it being used in the way you expect it to be used. It can be used as a bargaining chip, as a threat. It can be a red herring, but it will need to matter in the plot. So this prediction isn't absolute. The way I see things resolved solving based off of the fact that the loop feels like it has to happen again. We need to see the last loop. We need to see delivered on how special Fuko is. We know that Andy can make it to the next world, and we know that the two main characters are Fuko and Andy. And we know that Juice knows she has failed over and over again, and that Fuko is the difference. Fuko is the first power anyone thinks can touch God. I think that Fuko is going to ride the arc into the next loop, and we are going to have have this loop fail and yeah that sucks because there's so many things we lose there and so many things that don't matter there but it feels like it has to go this way and i absolutely agreed immediately because first of all who stop on the last life left on a video game that's dumb who, who leaves the countdown timer at four so clearly when you look at the board and they've only got one more space left of failure they're gonna fail so if that happens and it goes through but also i said to you it works because if she she doesn't make it in in the same way she has before she still comes back in the next loop yeah she just comes back unaware and so it does make a big difference but on the other hand it also doesn't we don't know if everyone comes back for sure yeah we know that most of the people come back but they're unaware so it makes a difference but it doesn't make a big enough difference that i wouldn't do it if i was the author and then the other thing the thoughts reset but the person stays and so the other thing is is it would be fascinating because we're meant to see that Fuko is an amazing person has that Luffy like quality to them people are drawn to them even though they can be oh dude that was so harsh when Victor was like you're stumpy and whatever whoa harsh man rude bastard honestly it was so rude but on the other hand it makes me wonder how she would do the next world if she would learn the lessons from the way that Juice didn't tell everyone right away in any of the realms and how Juice was holding things too close to her chest all the time and trying to live them just for herself because they've mentioned that five times in the arc part that we've yeah. read up to now about how she held it too close to her chest victor wanted to kill her so she could just move on and wouldn't keep repeating things about how she never asked for help and felt like she had to do everything alone they keep talking about that whereas i think that fuko would come in in a very different way and be like how can i immediately ask for help because fuko doesn't feel like she needs to be all the strength but also fuko is fresh in this way so it's easy to not be juice right like juice has had to ride it out all this time whereas fuko gets to come back fresh and not carry on the lives that they've led it's the same as andy has an easier time being andy than victor would because he suffered less exactly juice and, and victor have suffered so much you don't need to make i can only have eyes for a person dp it doesn't mean that i'm going to tell someone else why they're not awesome you can True. you can just not say shit right like that's a thing Victor could try. Just shut your mouth. Victor, look, just because you're only attracted to one woman doesn't mean you have to be... I, I guess it is someone being attracted to another woman with your body, so maybe you feel inclined to be vocal about it, but also yeah. don't be an asshole. No, you don't, need to, you don't need to say things. Not saying things is free. That's true. They haven't implemented that chip in your brain yet to charge you for silence. Or you have to pay for the shit you don't say. <laughs> yeah. Y'all know it's on the way. I, I can't believe this isn't more popular. I think it's just so weird. It's hard to pitch because like the big storytelling makes it feel bizarre and flippant, but like it cares so deeply about its characters, which was something I didn't expect going into it. The vibe we got early on didn't make me think there would be this deep reverence for its characters, but it's almost about how reverent it is for its characters. The, yeah. the narrative in this section is so metatextual and so about the love of writing this story, this love of the heroes they've created. It's so why I feel like the author has to to be God and because the Uma were created just to cause suffering like 
it feels like it has to be the case. I know I'm probably wrong. I just asked myself now how many chapters, and this is a thing that I would like to do because like life is short and we have to finish the sh we start in our work we do here. But yeah. like how many chapters do I need to give a manga before I give up on it? Because this, would I have read it if I had read only to chapter 32 and I had all of these pieces in front of me? Maybe, but I don't know if it was compelling enough by then. But by chapter 42, yeah, I yeah. would have been bought in lock, stock and barrel. At this point, with how high quality stuff is early in its scheduling, I genuinely don't think I would stick to One Piece unless I got to at least Baradier and maybe Arlong Park. And I stand by that One Piece, I think, is my favorite manga. So, like, how long do you have to give to something? A lot of series take a long time to grow on you. Yeah, I wonder if Rue is right that it's a one year of serialization that you have to give a person who's put all that time in one year's work. Because we just read the first year. Wild. We read the first year plus a couple. That's really wild. Yeah, it would have been like, it was really fun. I had a really good time. This was great. I don't know if it's for me or not. By chapter, seriously, 10 chapters later, I would have been like, I'm never giving up. Like I said, I genuinely think this is exploring some of the themes of One Piece better than One Piece does. And I, yeah. what world was I expecting? that this early not any world not a single this is world built to explore thematics it's from the ground up built for one of my favorite things fiction can do it's brilliant but that's because this series had one piece to work off of and one piece is one of the things that it's working from obviously you can't not think that when they say the things they say and so i think that one of the things that is cool is that they looked at one piece and the thematic idea of a person only dies when they're forgotten and having dreams that carry you through and all these other things, including the way that different characters act, blah, blah, blah. So mm -hmm. when you have one piece to write from and you've seen the way that they, you've seen some of the cool theories and ideas that they have, and you can take one of them and say like, when I see this, I think this, I think you can explore it better. Like, like it or lump it, we're supposed to do that. You're supposed to learn lessons. You're supposed to and build off of other works. Build off of other work. And you're supposed to explore themes and identities deeper based upon the ideas that other people have, and then join in with your own thoughts to create something richer and that's what they've done here i think this honors one piece mm -hmm. it honors these ideas in a way that is so incredible it also ties into the latest chapters of one piece when we're looking at eggheads yes. and and we have the professor standing there and staring at his giant brain in the container and saying the only question is what happens after we die and so it's questioning whether if that brain dies they're dead or if they're mm. forgotten they're dead right there Akira manages to explore the themes of Egghead that Egghead is built to explore, I would say as well as Egghead does in fewer chapters well before Egghead was released, and it's very cool. Yeah. Any prediction for Nico's negation ability? He's the only union member you don't know yet. Oh, um, I have paid no attention to him. Well, we need to. Let's put a pin in him so you and I can go back in and pay some attention to him about what they say. Because honestly, I didn't pay a lot of attention to him yet either. But clearly by the reaction of the squishies, he's going to be very important. Look, I know we pointed out how nothing's wasted in this. I'm kind of used to Mangaka saying there's this number of people and then being like, well, I only have seven ideas. So we're just going to have a couple that are there. <laughs> and maybe that's the wrong mentality to have here. But I ignored that one. An important, unremarkable, un caring. I'm putting a pin in it. I'll come back to it. Mostly what I have to say about this one is read undead unluck you plebs come on <laughs> uh, hey everybody no seriously everybody who clicked on this because they've watched the anime because apparently we reached where they caught up today which is criminal read it. it keep going with us join the book club this is so, it's much so good you know how much it costs to sub to shonen jump it's four bucks a month and you get unlimited access to any ongoing series am i sponsored to say that no and because i'm saying it for free they're never going to sponsor me they're not going to give me money because i actually like what they do so i'm just gonna tell you to do it isn't that crazy that capitalism works that way that because i like the product i can never be paid by them <laughs> wild okay we do have to do closing segments so let's do our top five characters are we taking our top two protagonists out of the ability to be in the top five well i mean we were gonna let them compete for at least two episodes to see if they were constantly dominating and here's the issue i don't know if they get a permanent seat because i want to pitch to you a shared seat between ano un and akira as number one i i will take that 
I will take that all day. Hell yes. Oh, it's $3 in the U.S. for Shona Jump. Unironically, I think Fuku and Andy should be number two. Yes, Fuku as, as like a shared spot. I think they deserve yeah. to share a spot this time, fully. Because also any growth that they make, any any strengths that they add to their character came together. It was all done together, yeah. They were woven together in this section. And I think it's really important that they're not separated because it is only as a unit that they became so interesting. Oh, man, yes. Can I pitch rip number five? just because Anno made me like them all of a sudden out of nowhere. I think it's interesting that you rip number five. I was giving rip three. I was not going that far. Then why don't we give rip four? Let's give rip four as a compromise. Can I pitch who I was going to say is number three? Okay, go ahead. I was going to pitch Juice. You know what? I could take that because Juice has been through some shit. Not happy with Juice. Juice was very... Here's the thing. Yeah, Juice is a bad guy, a bad in this in a lot of ways, but very compelling. Okay, well, I have a number five. That's why I didn't think that uh, Rip was a good five. Okay, what's your number five? Victor. I didn't want to say that, but I kept thinking in my head that Victor should be up here. And then should Juice and, and Victor share a spot, though? I mean, in a way, they're in love. But they were important to the story separately. They were separate entities That's entirely. That's what I was about to say, but they both had their own plot lines. They didn't move together. I think that Victor is five and Juice is three. I agree. I Juice felt more important in the story than Victor for me this time. Yeah, but I would put Victor at five because Victor... Victor, Victor was not only compelling, but he was the reason that the story is going to move in the direction that it's moving. Least favorite character is hard in this story because I think this author cares less about making hateable characters than Oda. Like, I, I think Oda goes out of his way to make awful people that you hate awful. I would agree. I think you want to hear who my least favorite character was? Can we do a three, two, one, and we say it at the same time in case Wait, it's the same? I don't know its I, name. Let me, let me let's find you, name. We haven't mentioned mine once today. Mine either. Wait. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Just wait. <laughs> One, three, two, two, three. One, bunny. bunny. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I don't hate Bunny that much. It's just like this author doesn't make hateable characters the way Oda does. He doesn't want you to hate his characters. And Bunny, I was just like, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> Look at these people. <laughs> oh, no one's happy that we don't like Bunny. God, this is hilarious. People are so <laughs> pressed about the Bunny hatred. When I was thinking least favorite, I was like, who did I just not care about? And it's Bunny. That's Bunny exactly like, what I was thinking. I was like, Bunny was fine. I mean, I wouldn't Bunny's like. Nothing. Look, if Bunny ends up in the top five in the future, you guys have your revenge. Okay. Are we in agreement? You know what this is? Bunny is our Usopp. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember how pressed people were when I hated Usa? <laughs> should we do drip? <laughs> yeah, 100% we should do drip. Okay, so let's each pick one because we do two drip per episode. Bunny does not get drip, guys. We suddenly have a much more active chat after our hatred of Bunny. Just hanging out. How <laughs> dare you hate the rabbit? My number one drip is Rip, even though I hate his toes poking out of his greaves. I don't like that the greaves have toes, but I, I agree that it. he looks pretty great. I'm sorry, something about a slutty dressed man who's wearing clothes too small for him is a look that anime does a lot that just kind of works. I just really like the greaves. I think they're cool. Other than the fact that the sandal part toes are sticking out, I'm like, ew. Okay, looking back over this i've reversed who the honorable mention is and who the winner is and this is also my pick for favorite minor character my favorite minor character pitch and number two other drip is miss josh what is wh who is miss josh? josh is the old west lady the one who dove to save fuko when the bandits came in oh yeah oh that was a really really sad part i'd say for a favorite minor character i think anno's mom was my favorite minor character Oh, God. I think that's an even better pick. Good, good job. Good, good pull. I really, when I think about it, Anno's mom had so much richness in such a short space of time. That was my favorite yeah. minor character. I gotta say, author, doing a great job with female characters. Maybe that's why I felt like this was made by a female author. It's just, I don't feel like women are devalued no. in any way. And I feel like there's equity between the people. Interesting. It popped off. It popped it off. off. For real, for real. I'm so excited for Undead Unluck people to see like their series get some deserved love. I got a secret for you, Drock. What's the secret? We are Undead Unluck people. <gasps> What is it, 93 next? 36 chapters? That's the maximum. 36 is the max, we said, so we have to do it. I had a really, really hard dentist appointment, and your sister came with me because I'm not good in the dentist. And I mean that in so many ways. And I had the Witch Hat Atelier in a bag to book. 
books and she read all of one of the witch had atelier and then i talked to her afterwards and she read the whole first book and then i was like how did you enjoy it blah 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 and she was like it was really cool are you supposed to look at the pictures much and i was like dude what? she wasn't looking at the pictures she's just kind of reading and i was like dude the what even are you talking it's, it's a comic book it's a manga man <laughs> gotta read the pictures and she was like yeah i didn't really think i needed to look at them much and i was like but the pictures tell you so many things haven't you heard the proverb about pictures and a thousand words and she's like meh till next time i've been unfiltered and i've been unhinged and it's been lovely talking to you squish on squishies Bum, 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 bum. Now I have the bum, bum. Let's add in the little Drock Show logo and we can get to the new One Piece chef tours. What's important now is we have to learn about Groust. Look at this perfect little lad. Look at this perfect boy. His name is a combination of Groust, a type of bird, plus Joust. It's brilliant.